Back in August of 2013, I released a video titled League of Legends vs Dota 2. This was a video that I thought I was pretty clever for coming up with. Instead of giving the inevitable biased fanboy comparison between the two games the way it seemed like most people did, I would ask the viewer why they were even watching a video titled League of Legends vs Dota 2, since it seemed like, at the time at least, the only reason people watched videos like these was to reinforce their own belief that their game was the best. To this day, I'm still proud of that video and think I accomplished what I set out to do when I originally made it. However, it turns out that there were a lot of people who actually did want an honest comparison. A lot of people don't know the history between the games, don't know the origin, the differences, and why the communities seem to dislike each other. Well, I do love my origin stories, and seeing as how I brushed up on the topic again in my previous Did You Know episode, I think now is a perfect time to look at the actual difference between League of Legends and Dota 2. This can be a kind of sensitive topic seeing as how many arguments there are between the communities, but I do hope you sit back, relax, and enjoy this tale of two MOBAs. As I've mentioned in a number of previous videos, all Dota-style, MOBA, or action RTS games can trace their roots back to a custom StarCraft map first seen 15 years ago. Created by a map maker named Eon64, this game, titled Eon of Strife, would never get hugely popular, but it would found a fan base large enough to have a number of fans port it into the next game Blizzard Entertainment would release, Warcraft 3, where one fan named Yul called his game Defense of the Ancients. This map would spark a another, slightly larger fanbase that would again recreate the map in Blizzard's next release, the expansion The Frozen Throne. All of these events would eventually lead to the creation and release of the biggest and best map yet, Dota All-Stars, created by two modders named Mian and Ragnar. This is the mod that would garner a huge fanbase, evolve into a huge competitive scene, and become one of the most successful mods slash custom maps of all time. Before it was going to get there though, it was going to have to be propelled by a number of large names within its community, and this is where League of Legends and Dota 2 start to come in. You see, Mian and Ragnar never really intended for doing much more other than creating their mod, so after putting it online for public use, they moved on. However, a number of other players would come in and start refining the game, the first of which being a player known as Ginsu. Ginsu enjoyed Dota All-Stars, but he thought the model could be improved upon a bit, and boy was he right. Ginsu would be the one to introduce many elements that virtually all MOBA games have today, switching the game focus to player versus player rather than co-op versus AI adding item tiers to improve scaling, giving variety, and of course, famously adding a boss monster to the map named Roshan after his bowling ball. Ginsu would make Dota All-Stars a lot more popular and really begin to kick the series off. However, after his additions, he'd end up passing the torch to another player slash modder named Icefrog. Icefrog would be the one to champion Dota, kickstarting and maintaining its success throughout the years. He'd refine the game into something seemingly perfect and do a fantastic job growing its player base into the millions. However, as good as it came to be, not everyone would be satisfied with All-Stars. Keep in mind, as popular as it was, Dota was still just a mod. Everything the creators and developers did with it had to be done through the Warcraft 3 engine. That meant that no matter what, no matter how popular they became or how good they made their mod, they couldn't make an official matchmaking service. They had to base a lot of their graphical content off of stuff from Warcraft 3, and maybe more importantly than anything, there was no way to punish toxic players. Because of this, a number of players wanted to make their own game, and that sparked the initial concept of a number of projects, one of which being League of Legends. Two entrepreneurs named Mark Merrill and Brandon Beck would team up with Ginsu along with the owner of DotaAllStars.com, Pendragon. Among others, they would found Riot Games and begin development on League of Legends while Icefrog continued to perfect Dota All-Stars, and this is where the games begin to show their differences. You see, everyone at Riot loved Dota and took inspiration from it, but they had to differentiate themselves from the mod if they were going to find success. So while Dota was the complex and exciting game that it was, League of Legends would be a bit different. Instead of being a carbon copy of Dota, Riot would make their own art style, their own items and champions, but more importantly than anything, they'd strip away a number of Dota mechanics that some might view as unnecessary. Let's give an example of what I mean by that. One of the many mechanics featured in Dota and Dota 2 is turn ratios. In a lot of top-down command style games like League of Legends, when you command a unit to go somewhere on the map, the unit will begin moving there immediately regardless 
regardless of where you click. However, something left over from the Warcraft 3 engine that was in Dota was turn rates and turn ratios, where when you tell someone to move, your character has to be facing the direction that they're told to move. If they aren't, then they'll have to turn towards that direction first. This opens up a cool new level of depth, where different characters may have different turn rates, and also rewards really good positioning. However, this also may make movement feel less fluid for some beginners. Raya would remove a number of mechanics, everything from turn ratios to creep denial. This allows players to be introduced to the game with a much friendlier learning curve if they're new, at the sacrifice of the same level of depth that Dota originally had, along with a number of its mechanics. This is why some Dota fans call League a casual game, despite it having such a large competitive scene. Not all these mechanics that got removed were something as small as turn ratios, some were as big as the attributes system, which has been with Dota ever since its days as a mod. All in all though, these are the two main differences between the games. Dota 2 is the game that originated from the mod, keeping most, if not all of the mechanics, the movement system and art styles, whereas League of Legends tried to evolve the genre more, removing mechanics that some players liked but some players didn't, no matter how big or small that they were, and substituting in their own mechanics like rune pages, masteries, summoner spells, and the brush system. This, along with the free-to-play business model and easy-to-learn hard-to-master design philosophy that Riot came up with, set League up to be the main competitor to the traditional Dota-style genre. That's not to say that they were trying to compete with Defense of the Ancients itself or even Dota 2, they were just the first to change the formula and push their game in a slightly different direction rather than copying everything about the original mod the way a few other startups like Heroes of New Earth were currently doing. The very same month that League was released, in October of 2009, Icefrog would announce that he had been hired by Valve to work on a project that was good news for Dota fans, basically confirming the development and eventual release of Dota 2. Dota 2 would stay true to Dota's model all the way down to the turn ratios, which was proven when Valve hosted a Dota 2 tournament, the first international, before the game was even released. Nobody had gotten their hands on it, but they were still able to play, meaning it was pretty much the exact same as the original mod. Ever since since all this, there's been plenty of controversy between these two games. There was a moment where Pendragon shut down DotaAllStars.com, claiming that Icefrog had worked in secret to help S2 Games develop Heroes of New Earth, which was again a direct competitor to League of Legends in its early days. However, for every controversial moment between the communities, there's almost always been a good one, like when Dota 2 was holding its World Finals, the third international, and Riot chose not to have any LCS matches that week so as not to take viewership away from Dota's competitive scene. Each game has their strengths and weaknesses, and neither is inherently better or worse than the other. They're ultimately just different experiences that you won't be able to fully comprehend or differentiate from with one little YouTube video. They each have a place in the MOBA community, and they each have a place in the world of esports, so I highly encourage you to check out both if you're looking for which one to pick up and play. They have awesome competitive scenes, awesome gameplay, and a rich, interesting history behind their origin. Thank you all very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed just a few things before you go. Firstly, I'm obviously much more familiar with League rather than Dota, and a lot of this information was passed down through word of mouth, so I apologize if I got any nitpicky details incorrect. I'd also like to say, if you were looking for a direct comparison video where I list out everything in League but not in Dota, everything in Dota but not in League, I apologize, sorry, but at the same time, they're very different experiences, you can't really tell the actual differences without playing them yourselves, so go ahead and play them yourself. They're both free, so, you know, you should just play each and pick what, whichever one you want to play. I'd also like to say, if you were looking for some more history, I kept this video relatively short for the sake of brevity, but there's a lot more information on the history between these games, and it's really, really... It, there, there's just a lot more out there that I find very interesting and that I'm sure a lot of you would find interesting So if you're interested in learning more go ahead and I've linked a few of my favorite articles and videos that I love to read and watch in the description Go check those out uh, Also, if you'd like to see more of my videos I suggest that you go watch my history that I did on the rise and fall of Rareware, which is a really neat story that shows a lot of ambition and certainly encourages me to be ambitious every single day. And also, if you're interested in more MOBA videos and more League of Legends videos, go check out my Did You Know League of Legends uh, Part 3, which just came out, which I, I enjoyed making it. I always enjoy making those, and a lot of you enjoyed watching it. So. 
Anyway, once again, thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. Thank you, specifically, for making it to the very end. And until next time, good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.